Today is Wednesday, September 4th, and I felt compelled to go live with a reaction to the news by this disgrace of an Attorney General, Merrick Garland, announcing uh, both sanctions and legal action against Russian companies for alleged interference in the U.S. upcoming U.S. presidential election. This is, once again, uh, or as Ronald Reagan would have said, there you go again, uh, the efforts of the Democrat Party to play the Russian card when the only one country in the world that is guilty of electoral interference in more countries for a longer period of time is the United States. Go back to the days of Dwight Eisenhower with the newly minted CIA. During Dwight Eisenhower's time in office, those eight years, the CIA carried out 170 covert actions in 48 different countries. And what we're talking about there is electoral interference. Some of those included overthrowing the government of Jacobo Arbenz in Guatemala, Mossadegh in Iran, just to mention a few. And the source for this is Tim Weiner's book, Legacy of Ashes. It's not Larry Johnson's opinion. It's not Larry Johnson digging into top secret files. This is published and it's out there for people to see. On top of it, the United States every year allocates literally billions of dollars to interfere in the elections of other countries. Just this year, the the Congress has approved, last I checked, $315 million for the National Endowment for Democracy. They've done a number of $300 million for what they call the Counter-Russian Influence Project. They've done $2.9 million for what they call Democratic Programs. And we haven't even talked about uh, Radio Liberty, Radio Free Europe, uh, television stations. And then on top of that, you have U.S. media, then the person of CNN, MSNBC, Fox News that are broadcast overseas. If the U.S. government is going to assert that the TV station RT, they broadcast at RT.com, is so heavily influencing U.S. uh, elections, they need to be able to explain how they do that since they are banned from broadcasting in the United States. The only way you can get them is if you happen to have uploaded the app, RT app, on your uh, Apple TV device years ago because you can't buy it online anymore. They're not available. Or uh, you get it online. But you can't get it with any cable station, with any broadcast station in the United States. And that includes even if you sign up for a Russian language package. Uh, RT is not available. So just how in the world does RT influence the U.S. presidential election when it has virtually no audience whatsoever in the United States? And RT.com is a social media platform. It's tiny compared to Fox, MSNBC, CBS, ABC, which are rife with propaganda. Isn't it interesting that RT.com was one of the few to deny that the Russians were behind the Hunter laptop? And it was CIA officers who swore that it sure had the appearance of a, of a Russian operation when they knew, in fact, that it was a goddamn lie that the Hunter Biden laptop was Hunter Biden's. And this was not the efforts of some nefarious foreign intelligence service to fool the American people. This was a political operation of Hillary Clinton and her campaign to try to cover that up. The attacks on Donald Trump that have started in December of 2015, and the the email between uh, Mr. Badowski 
and, and Mr. Uh, the the head of uh, uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, John Podesta, uh, her campaign manager, where they talked about how they were going to use the appearance of Trump's relationship with Vladimir Putin as a cudgel to beat him, to attack him. And they went through all great efforts. They employed the CIA. They employed the FBI. The only one that interfered in the 2016 election was the U.S. intelligence community, the U.S. law enforcement community, and the Democrat Party. And if YouTube bans this video for me telling the truth, too bad. But at least it'll get out there. This was an attack on our political system that was internal. It was not done by the Russians. It was not done by the Chinese. It was not done by the Venezuelans. It was not done by the Iranians. We did this. It was an American hatched plan, executed, carried out. And so now here we are again with this disgrace, Garland, as attorney general, sworn to uphold the Constitution, now doing everything in his power to trash it, attacking unnecessarily foreign media outlets. I've been fortunate to have been a TV talking head that started back in 1994 with the capture of Carlos the Jackal. And on the day he was captured, uh, the booker at CNN, a guy named Pat Reap, called his brother Joe Reap, who happened to have been the counterterrorism public affairs guy. Joe and I had worked together for four years. And Pat was looking for somebody to come on air to talk about it. Well, called me up. Uh, his brother uh, got a hold of me, Joe, and said, would you help Pat out? And I did. And that started me on an on a unexpected career path where I became a pundit on the matters concerning terrorism. What was interesting is I've done CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, PBS. Uh, I've done the BBC. I've done the CBC, Canadian Broadcast Corporation. I've done every major media, electronic media platform uh, in the United States, Canada, and, and in Europe. The one thing uh, that has always been common with those appearances is almost always I was called in advance to do a pre-interview screening to find out what was I going to say, what were my comments going to be. And many times I was disinvited when they found out that I was going to say something they didn't want to hear or that didn't fit with the narrative they wanted to present. There are only two media outlets where I have been interviewed that have never, ever asked me, and I'm talking about TV, but never, ever asked me a pre-interview question in advance. And that is RT and the Iranian station Press TV. They don't ask. I'm going to tell them what I think, and I don't have a pre a list of talking points beforehand of what they want to hear and what they don't want to hear. I have been critical of Russia on RT.com, and this still have me back, and they still never ask a pre-interview question. So this action today by the United States is shameful. Uh, it is a disgrace, and it, but it shouldn't be a surprise because this is just part of a broader picture of attack on free speech, on journalism. The United Kingdom has become a fascist group of thugs going after journalist Richard Medhurst, and I believe Sarah Wilkinson is her name, two people who have written about the Israeli genocide against the Palestinian people and are now facing terrorism charges for the audacity of writing and reporting what they saw. Think about that. I've discussed previously the arrest in France of Pavel Durov, the founder of Telegram. And we've seen Elon Musk being attacked by the likes of uh, Lula, uh, President Lula in Brazil. Let me be clear. 
I am against censorship of all kinds. Uh, even if somebody's saying there's something that's uh, unpopular or even a lie. You know, if the, if the 51 intelligence agents want to be able to go on uh, to various TV stations and platforms and claim that the Hunter Biden laptop is a piece of disinformation, let them do it. I disagree with it. And I want to have a voice to be out there to challenge them and to take them down. But you ought to have the free exchange of ideas, even with those that we disagree with. But the, the action that the Biden administration is taking today is simply designed to divert attention away from the fact that the only ones still interfering in the American presidential election are the Democrats who are trying to sign up illegal immigrants as legal voters, which they are not, and to use them to try to swing the election. Instead, they want to blame it on Russia. It is just a, a, a sad commentary on how far the American Republic has fallen. I'm Larry Johnson. Please like and subscribe. You can follow me here on YouTube or at BitChute. Uh, BitChute, at least, I know will not censor what I've said today. Thank you.